Hi friends, welcome back to day four of Becoming a Spy. We have done some amazing projects so far and I'm really excited to share this new project with you guys um, today. And I just wanna give you a quick reminder, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel, check us out on Facebook and Instagram so you guys always know what's going on and you can always support us as low as a dollar a week at patreon.com slash Research if you wanna get everything outlined for you at the beginning of the week, your supplies, any downloads, and all of that good stuff. Um, and in the pre-show, we had the camera on Tiny Dancer and Friends, and you might have noticed in the ferns, some of them are now full frogs, which is amazing. We got to see them from teeny tiny tadpoles all the way into frogs, which is fabulous. I think some of them we will have to release this weekend because full frogs do not like dandelion greens as much as tadpoles do. Um, I'm gonna go real quick through what we need for the supplies for today, and if you want a shout out, you can put your name in the comments, as always, and then we'll get started. So there's two options today. One of them uses sort of a lavalier microphone, because we're gonna make a parabolic mic, so it uses something like this. If you don't have something like this, you could try using um, your parents' headphones, because a lot of times those actually have a tiny little mic on them also. And you could see if that would work just as well. I'm not actually sure about that, but these are like $6 on Amazon, so they're not too much, and they do ship within a few days, but that's a way that you could try making this project to eavesdrop on whoever we're eavesdropping on um, without having to order anything. But this is, we're gonna use a lavalier mic for that. You're gonna need a bowl, kind of the bigger the better, but you don't want a flat bottom on the bowl, so you want it this, this bowl sort of comes in and it's only flat for a little bit, and then it comes back out. You don't want a bowl that's sort of really big and then really flat on the bottom. You want it nice and curved if possible. Size of the bowl does not matter. We can, we're gonna make this adjustable for size. You're gonna need a pair of scissors so that we can cut some stuff. You're gonna need some tape. You need some thin cardboard, like an old cereal box that hopefully you guys have learned to start keeping because we use these like every single week. It's kind of amazing. I have a ruler and a pen, but you don't actually need it. We're gonna cut strips out of this, and if you want them straight, you might wanna go grab that. I have a hole puncher. Again, not entirely necessary, but if you wanna make yours so that it can sort of scrunch down and fit into a little spy kit you're making, this could be really helpful. And if you are using a hole puncher, there are, I'm gonna show you a couple ways to string your little pieces together. One of them would use some paper clips. And if you don't have paper clips, one of the ways uses some safety pens. If you don't have safety pens, one of the ways would use some pipe cleaner. And if you don't have pipe cleaner, another way I'll show you is just some common brads. And then to attach it to the bowl, I'm gonna use some little teeny tiny binder clips. But if you don't have those, that's fine. You could use something like a clothespin if you needed to. So that would also work really well. Um, you don't need the slinky. That is just for some explanations we're going to learn about today. And then if you don't have that stuff but you still want to eavesdrop, I also have a project for you. And that uses different bowls and cups of plastic or ceramic or glass or metal. Just a whole conglomeration of them, a big variety of them. And I'll talk about a little thing that we can test with that as well as we learn about sound and how to eavesdrop. It's gonna be great because we need to eavesdrop to get more information. Yesterday we made our periscope so we could watch things and get information to encrypt and put in our dead drop that we made. Today we will be listening in on super secret conversations to see what sort of spytastic things we can pick up and then encrypt and also put in our dead drop. So we have, so far, we have learned how to encrypt messages using a cipher wheel, and we made our own cipher wheels. We have learned how to pass our messages to our other fellow spies using a dead drop. And then yesterday we learned how to visually spy on people making a periscope. Today we are going to learn how to eavesdrop on people to listen in on those conversations about maybe what you're getting for your birthday. And tomorrow we will be doing um, a paper circuits, which I know Kaya's not here, but it's Kaya's favorite day is our circuits day. We're gonna make a Morse code sender so that you can send your encrypted messages with light instead of having to use a dead drop. Now, you might be wondering, 
ooh, how do I help myself eavesdrop? And why would that be helpful? So we do need to listen to conversations to get like the whole thing. Maybe something I see with my eyeballs is misleading me. Maybe I think there's a fight going on, but really they're just acting. And if I could hear them, I would know that. So we are going to find a way to eavesdrop. Now, if you don't have a microphone with you today and you don't wanna try this out with your parents' headsets, that's totally fine. I have a project for you. So the project is to listen through the door. Now you've probably seen it in a lot of movies when people put something to the door like this and they listen through the door. And you might be wondering how that works and what works best. So your project will be to go find a bunch of things in your kitchen to try it out. And I do want you to try out two ways for each item. I want you to try listening, putting the open end against the wall and putting your ear against the side and also flipping it over. A lot of times I think in movies we see it this way. And so I'm curious, does this way work better or worse than that way? And you can see also, does ceramic work better or worse than plastic or metal or does the shape matter? And this is like a great one for shape because they are the same plastic. So I could see does the shape matter and does it help me hear better or worse? And what these are doing when you're listening through a wall is they're not actually amplifying the sound through using electricity. It's called mechanical amplification. It's passive, so you don't have to add any batteries or anything like that, which is handy. But what's happening is when I'm talking to you guys, it's going through a microphone and the microphone is actually sensing a whole bunch of vibrations or waves. Now these are similar to ocean waves. They're mechanical waves that something is moving. So like an ocean wave goes up and down like this. A wave in a stadium when you're cheering for your favorite football team, everybody stands up. That's a mechanical wave because we're standing up and then we're sitting down, which is really cool. Light is different. Light is called an electromagnetic wave. So that one, you don't need anything to move with an electromagnetic wave, which is cool. But sound we do. And unlike the ocean that's going up and down like this, or unlike a wave in a stadium that we're cheering our friends on and we're all standing up, and you can kind of see it sort of go like this through the stadium, sound waves don't travel like this, which is kind of interesting. Sound waves are called compression waves, and what they do is they compress the air, and I have my slinky to show you what a compression wave looks like. Because it's kind of hard, we're so used to waves looking like this, and that is what the water does. But a compression wave actually looks like this, where there's a chunk of compression between my springs. So I have like springs getting closer and then further as we go. We can see if we can see it. It's gonna be really hard to see on a video, but you can see my springs are really far apart right now. And if I release it, these guys, everything's gonna get closer and it's gonna come all the way over to here and it'll start bouncing back and going back and forth. And that's a compression wave. It's pushing stuff forwards and backwards. And when you hear, the air is actually pushing in your ear forwards and backwards. And we're taking those little vibrations and it can hear inside your inner ear and our brain turns that into sound. So we need something to move back and forth, just like that. So if I'm in water, I can totally make sound. I could scream underwater ah! and it would compress the water molecules and those water molecules would all compress. It could hit somebody's eardrum because you'd have the compression coming to your ear and you would still hear a sound. It wouldn't sound the same as if it was in air, but you could still hear it. And then a thought experiment for you guys could be, what would it sound like to hit two metal pipes together inside the International Space Station and outside the International Space Station, which could be a cool thing. If you have a guess, you could type that into Evan and see. And while you guys are thinking about what a metal pipe might sound like inside the space station versus outside the space station, I'm gonna talk about what's happening if you use this very cheap, very low tech method of eavesdropping. So let's say I'm putting my ear either way. We'll find out, it's your job to find out which way is better. But what's happening is the sound waves that are going through the wall 
are actually compressing the wall. So the wall and all of the wires in the wall and all of like this um, insulation, like the stuffing we put in the wall is all getting vibrated and it's happening right now. My voice is doing all of that to go to the back of our house. So I'm pretty sure Georgia reading her book in her bedroom can hear my voice through the door because it's compressing the door and then the door vibrating compresses the air after the door and then it can reach her ear, right? If I put this against a wall, I can take the vibrations that are happening in the wall, put it straight through this cup because the cup is really rigid, and then I could concentrate it on my ear. And again, I'm not gonna tell you which way you wanna do this, but one way will definitely work better than the other way. And what we're doing is we're taking the vibrations from the wall and we're concentrating them to then pound into our ear and give our brain that sensation that it recognizes as noise. And you can do that experiment and see, does a bowl work better? Does something really wide to catch more vibrations work better? Or does something like squiggly because it hits the wall in more spots and then come to your ear, does that catch the vibrations better? Um, lots of questions for you guys to think about there. And I would ooh. like to mention, we yes. have some friends who showed up as well as a new friend. Yay! We have Lola, which is the first time Lola. she just joined us. Oh, I'm so excited that you're joining us today. Oh, and, that makes my heart happy. And we have Miss Kaya here. Hello! Oh, Kaya, you're here! We were just talking about making a Morse code LED signaling thing tomorrow for our paper circuits. And I thought Kaya's going to really enjoy it. That's Kaya's favorite day. Paper circuits day. And I see Millie over in the corner. In Yay! Zoom. Hello, Millie, and probably Lila. Yeah. Is my guess. And Tamsin and Laurel say hi. Yay! Hello, Tamsin and Laurel. Um, and then we have. Do we have a guess about what metal pipes might sound like if we clinked them together on the space station versus clinking them together in outer space outside the space station? Hmm. I have no mm. guesses so All right. far. Well, I'm going to let you guys still think about that, though. But I would like to have some guesses. I would love to have some guesses. All right. So we are going to talk about, if you have a microphone, how you can even do better than listening on a wall. Because this probably doesn't work very well for just picking up, like, birds in your forest or whispers that are happening in the backyard next door or something. This works really well if there's something that I can, that's catching the vibrations like a wall, and I can put it against those vibrations and get those vibrations direct from the wall right into my ear and take a large area of the wall and condense it to a small area on my ear. But if I'm like out in the forest and I'm trying to listen, this doesn't really help me hear birds any better. So we're going to talk about a way that we can do that. And we're going to use a bowl, which is great. Now, yesterday, Lila was in Zoom, and she had this great question as we were making our periscopes because she had a mirror. And you guys might have a mirror like this at home. One side of the mirror showed her reflection, just like what she looks like. And if she flipped it over and she looked at the mirror that way, she actually looked zoomed in, like her nose was bigger, her eyes were bigger, her mouth was bigger, everything was bigger. And she was like, Dr. Erica, how come this mirror makes my nose bigger and this mirror on the other side, which looks exactly the same, doesn't? And we looked at her phone in the mirror and her phone was no longer a rectangle in the mirror that made Lila's face bigger. And that's because the mirror was actually curved and it was taking light that was coming in and it was spreading it out. Now, I don't really wanna spread something out if I want to condense it, but I could have taken that same mirror with light, shaped it differently, and when light came in, it would have condensed it. And that's what we're gonna do with our sound waves too. We're gonna to have sound waves that come in here. Some of them are gonna hit down here. Some of them might hit right in the middle and bounce straight up but some of them will hit on the side and they'll also bounce up, but they won't bounce straight up. They'll bounce up at an angle. And so what I'll get is I'll get this cone of bouncing sound waves. Now, if I put my microphone right in the middle of this, all those bouncing sound waves are going to all be coming together 
and it'll sound a lot louder because instead of just hearing one little sound wave, I might hear 300 sound waves, which makes it a lot easier. And you could even test your bowl because if I talk like this, I actually hear myself a lot louder. And you might be saying, Dr. Erica, how come I can't listen to the bird over there? Because we're going to point it at the bird. How come I can't put my ears inside of it like this and hear it? Which you could do, except for there's one big thing that happens here. I might be trying to hear the conversation over there. And this is totally taking a whole bunch of these sound waves and turning them into a cone to go into my ear and make it sound amplified. Except for when all those sound waves come in, they bounce off my head first. That's the problem with just trying to eavesdrop like this. Now it might work a little bit, but it's probably not gonna work very well because my head is kind of blocking everything. If I had a massive bowl, like the bowl the size of my room and I just like stood there like that, that would probably totally work. Because now I have so much more space for it to hit the bowl, right? There'd be all that extra space and you have all those sound waves that could then come back in a cone and you could listen to. But here, I mean, I'm also pretty sure if we took like a room sized bowl out to go eavesdrop, somebody might be like, do you see that room sized bowl over there? Maybe we should have our super secret meeting tomorrow when that, that doesn't exist. That would, it might not be very sneaky. I feel like it's not very sneaky. But they, you know, but this they, could be more sneaky. They did actually do that in Italy where they designed really? some of the rooms so that you could hear each other from the other side of the oh, room. Oh, that and is And they cool. would use that to eavesdrop. Yes. And in fact, if you live in the Seattle area, the Seattle Science Center has something very much like that, where it's got these really large, I mean, they're probably like three or four feet in diameter discs that you go stand at one and you can talk to your friend who's standing at the other one and it goes off the disc and it condenses. So it reflects those sound waves right into their ears and they can hear you. And then you can do the same thing. You can talk back and you, but you still have to have these like four foot wide discs so that your body doesn't physically block all of the waves coming in. If I am talking like this, my face blocks most of this. So I can't really get much out of it. Um, we have some guesses. Ooh, we have some guesses. Perfect. We have Orion is thinking that in space, sound can't travel. Okay. And then we have George saying there's no noise in the outer space. Mm. We have Orion saying he thinks that space explosions with really big sounds in space mm -hmm. are, are fake. Okay. What about the International Space Station? If I'm inside the space station? If you're in the space station. Because when I'm in space. Oh, if you're inside do or something. Do I hear in the something space or not? That's curious. And then Callie thinks that hmm. there would be a, a hollow echo in, in space. space. Ooh, great guess. I like this. So that's what we have for guesses so far. All right. We'd like to know what you think would I'm gonna, happen. I'm going to wait station. until you guys, yeah, I'm going to let you guys guess about what's inside the space station. And I'll make this while you guys put your guesses in, and then we can go and talk about that. Are we ready to make? We are going to make this. So what you need is we basically need a way to put this microphone and point it this way into it. Because remember, our sound waves are going to come in this way. They're going to bounce off, and they're going to make this nice cone. So they're gonna be coming, they'll be traveling this way that we want to pick up. All I need to do is center this microphone so that it points this way, which is really kind of cool because now you can be super sneaky. You could do this with any bowl. So you could just have the part that we're going to make in your little spy gear spot and then anywhere you go you just grab a bowl and you can do this. All right and all we need we're going to create this little cardboard strip that reaches across the bowl and the thinner the better for the same reason that we talked about earlier of if it's too thick we're going to block the sound waves from getting into the bowl so that it can't reflect off the bowl and sort of come up as that cone and condense all of the sound to make it sound much louder. So if I had taken a strip and I had covered the bowl like this, that's not going to be very useful. I'm just going to take a really thin piece. And if you want it to be perfectly straight, you could use a ruler um, and a pen to do that. Or you could just sort of eyeball making this nice and long. And I'm just realizing I might not have made mine thick enough to show you another fun way to make this portable. But here is my little cardboard piece. So now I have it, I can put it right across. I can hold it on my bowl either with some clothes pins. I could use some binder clips. 
Or I could also just use a piece of tape. These are all ways that we can hold it onto that bowl, just like that. It's gonna go straight across. And then I just need a little tab. It doesn't even need to be this big. This is gonna be the tab that my microphone is going to clip onto, because if I clip onto this piece, you'll notice my microphone is not really pointing where I want it to point, because I want it to point down. But what I could do is I could tape a little piece on like this, and I can make it so that this piece sort of folds down, and then I can, let's see, attach my mic to the side of it. And then I want my mic to be in the middle, so I can put it on just like this. So it's just a little taped tab that can flip up, and then that allows my mic to point down right into it. And now this mic is going to pick up the sound of not only that tiny bit of microphone that normally absorbs those vibrations and turns it into an electrical signal, it's gonna pick up the vibrations of this whole area, which is much larger than the little tiny area of the microphone, which gives me a much bigger signal, which allows me to hear things much louder, which is handy. And then this side, you just plug into your phone, your mom or your dad's phone, and you open up an audio recording or like a video recording and it will record the sound that is amplified in here. That's all you gotta do, which is really cool. Now, if you don't wanna carry around a long piece like this, I can show you a cool way to put it together where you have sort of, um, it kind of like folds up really nicely to fit into a spy kit. You'll need a little bit of a thicker piece to do that. And this way you could actually add a whole bunch of these together so that no matter what size your bowl is, no matter what the diameter of that bowl is, how wide its mouth is, you could actually adjust your project to fit. I'm gonna cut this down just a little bit. You need to be thick enough to have a hole punch, but that's about it. And then you would decide like, where is your spy kit and how big is your spy kit? And how big do you want this piece to be? So maybe I decide I want it to be, to fold down into a size like this. So I could cut my strips into pieces that are this size. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to, to put a hole punch on the top and the bottom of these strips. So I can take my little hole puncher and I can punch the top and the bottom. If you wanna be extra secure, you could add tape to it first so it doesn't rip later on. That will give it a little extra um, security, like safety in terms of breaking. But it's not absolutely necessary by any means. So, and I'm gonna show you a few different ways that you can hook these together and then they can still string across your bowl, which is kind of handy. So, I have all of these guys with hole punches and in a second I'm gonna show you how we can attach those with some different things, but Evan's got a question coming in. All right, or we, maybe have, a guess. we have some more guesses. Ooh, perfect. Also, I'd like to say hi, Griffin. Hey, Griffin, it's great to see you today. Um, Orion asked a question. Uh, mm -hmm. How do the um, pipes and playgrounds work? Those are things that you can trans you can hear sound from mm. different parts of playgrounds. Same idea. So it's actually the same idea as the telephones with the two cups and then the string in between them. So. Our sound that we talk to is the vibrations through the air, and you could make those vibrations through this table or through the wall or through metal pipes. And so what's happening as you're talking through the metal pipe, you're actually sending those vibrations down the metal pipe, and then the other person who's listening is hearing the vibrations come up the metal pipe. So you're basically, it's easier for the sound to transfer in that metal pipe, because imagine in air, you have molecules that can go anywhere. So you could have the vibrations, they can just go anywhere. But in metal, they're really tied together and they're really tight, so they're just all hanging out. And it is really like almost a tug of war wave in metal, so it can travel, sound can travel much farther in metal. And it can sound, if it can travel farther, that means it sounds clearer or louder at the same distance that you would be in air. So then it, you talk in one side, travels through the metal, 
you hear it on the other sound side and it sounds clearer and louder than if you were just talking through the air because the air sort of can go everywhere. It's hard to get that nice vibration in air. Okay, also yeah. we have um, Orion thinks that we would be able to hear in, spa in the side of the space station because ah. there's air in the play space, space station. station and not in space. And then he, Orion's also mentioning that the water is low on Midway Island. That could be a code for the water is low on Midway Island. I don't know. Mm. Maybe it's a code. I don't know. Um, that would be cool. Griffin says he loves Chris Hatfield. Hatfield. Oh, yeah. yeah. They're pretty fantastic. I love and the astronauts. And Kaya, I think you want to refresh. Oh, if you can't hear Kaya needs to refresh if you can't hear. All right. So we're gonna, I'm going to keep that space station and space sound question open for just a little bit longer. And I'm going to show you guys some ways you can connect these. So one way that you could connect these is you just take two and if you have brads, you could put a brad between them. And you're going to need to sort of fold it over on the same side as one of them. So you can just fold it like that. And then we could tape that down. And this way would allow us to very easily sort of, oops, flip this piece open. We're gonna tape it down so it doesn't fall out. So we can now sort of hinge this open. But let's say you don't have a brad, that's okay. You could hinge this open with a paper clip. So you could thread the paper clip through, so you can just slit it through that hole. And then you're gonna have to slit it all the way back into this hole so that we can slip the other one through. If you wanna be extra secure, you could go into that little hole. I don't think that's necessary. And then, oops, we can add the other one over here. And so now I have another type of a hinge. And again, if I wanted to, I could still slide this through an extra time like this. And if we flip this piece over, then it can't accidentally fall out very easily, which is kind of what you would want for something in your spy kit. It just takes a little bit. So now this part can also hinge. So I have a hinge. If you don't have a brad, you could use like a paper clip to hinge these together. If you don't have a brad or a paper clip, you could use something like a safety pin. So you could just safety pin, you could open your safety pin, put it through both your holes, and you could close your safety pin, and you have another hinge, which is cool. And then a last option would be, I'm gonna punch one little teeny tiny one, would be to use like either pipe cleaner or string and you would just cut a little piece of pipe cleaner or string and you could thread it through both of your holes and then you could twist or tie depending on what you have these together and then you have another type of hinge so this lets you hinge this and sort of close it up so that it can be fitting in your items really easily okay the pipe cleaner is maybe the least effective hinge right now, but with um, string, I think it would be maybe more effective. And then when you're ready, what you would do is you would open it up. You would either clip it or tape it to your project. So let's see if I got, let me put my clips in here. Here's one clip. And notice that even though it's too long, I could still clip it pretty easily. And you would still need that little extra flap. So I still need to add my flap to it. Let's clip this onto the edge of my bowl. Now my bowl has this nice edge that sort of comes out like that for clipping. If you have a bowl that doesn't, it just goes straight up, you could just bend it and clip it onto the sides of the bowl like that. And I still need this little extra flap that we had made to make the microphone point straight down. So I just need a little piece of cardboard and a piece of tape. And if you're doing this idea where it folds up, you could just put this one in the middle one at all times, and then when you open it up, you just have extra sort of legs coming out the side of the bowl, and that would be fine. So I'm gonna grab my little piece of tape, and I can put it on somewhere that's sort of the middle, which is a little tricky because I have uneven amounts here, but that's okay. And then it can just hang off so that it points to the center of the bowl which will allow that microphone to clip on and gather all of that sound. And that's all you need to make a parabolic amplifier, which is kind of amazing because 
These things are really expensive if you want to buy like a real deal electrical one. They're pretty expensive online. This will work pretty effectively when you plug it into your phone and you record the sound, which is really neat. Um, one really cool thing that you could do with this is if you do a sit spot or you're like studying nature right now, you could go sit in the forest and listen to the sounds you hear. And you could also be pointing this at them and then record those sounds and see if you pick up new sounds because you'll pick up sounds that were much quieter using that amplifier. All right, so the question about the International Space Station and sounds. Did we have any more guesses? Uh, let's see. Hmm. If we bang some things together in space. I don't see any more guesses. We're on the space station. So we've had a few guesses then. We've got, we don't hear anything in space, and also that it would maybe have a ringing sound in space. And then we also have, we would hear normally on the space station. So Orion is right. On the space station, we have air, which is pretty fantastic because without it, our species does not survive. So we do have air that is on the space station. And if we have air, that's a gas. And that gas can feel those compressive waves. And we can talk to each other, which is good because it would be really hard to be on the space station and not able to verbally talk or hear any sounds for your entire one year stay. Or if you wanted to talk to your, you know, your friends that were helping you on a project, you couldn't talk to them. You'd have to learn like sign language that wouldn't work very well. Also, we still need to breathe. Pretty sure we can't stay somewhere holding our breath for a year. So Orion, you're right. If you banged two metal pipes on the space station, because that capsule has air, you would hear them. And then outside of the space station, Orion and I forget who else mentioned it. Griffin. Griffin, you guys are also right that if you banged it outside, there is nothing to help that wave move. So there's no physical medium for it to move. Water waves, you need water. Like I don't have water waves in this hunk of air, right? I also don't have stadium human waves in this hunk of air because there's no water in this hunk of air or humans. So it's kind of hard to make those waves. In space, there is no air in that hunk of space that could move back and forth, that could create those vibrations and let those vibrations go through space, move through space into somebody's ear. So you can't hear in space. And Orion, I do totally agree. It is somewhat frustrating when you watch cool space things and then you're like, wait, that doesn't happen for real. However, I will say the Martian is phenomenally good about that. They did a really good job. And you would hear noise on Mars because Mars does have an atmosphere, which means it's holding gases in. So that means there are gases available, even though it's thinner than ours, you would hear something on Mars. Cool fact. Cool fact. I know. All right, I think that's what we have. I mean, it was super easy today. Super easy. It was a fun little project. We wanna hear how you guys do mm -hmm. recording stuff with your microphones. I know, I'm excited. And this all, works so well to just sort of like fold up and like with your little microphone and it all goes into your like little like spy case you know which would be really cool if you spent the time to cut out like a square in a book look how look how little this fits in and then you just like go have a bowl from wherever you're staying at the hotel cafeteria and you go out and you can like you're ready to go boom ready to rock and roll and be a spy which is amazing um, all right, so if there are no other questions, we'll head over into our Zoom classroom where we can have lunch together. We can watch Tiny and friends try to escape because they are pretty much full frogs at this point. We only have a few more tadpoles left, which is sad. Um, and we'll also put it on our new butterflies that just came out so you guys can see that. And I'm happy to answer questions about all of these things or about any other project we've made. So if you have questions about Enigma or our cypher wheel or dead drops, we can do all of that. Or we can just spare, share spy stories, which will be fun. So we will say goodbye to our YouTube friends and hello to our Zoom friends. And we will see you tomorrow as we make an awesome LED Morse code machine, which will be a great time. We'll see you then. Have a good one.